Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that'll be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Hey, Nathan, what is your go-to conversation starter? You know, I actually talked with Tebow about this over lunch today. So my my go-to right off the bat is always, hey, how's it going? That's how I start. But then whenever they provide like a, a, a response to it, I will almost always say like, um, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? And I don't like to ask a, just a um, like a closed ended question where they can just say, I'm good. Like I want something that forces them to expand like on what their life has been like a little bit. Um, and, and then I'm looking for a, a connection point. So that's my, that's my go-to. Um, I do still, I mean, if I'm just passing in the hallway, I do still give the like, um, how's it going mm-hmm. or, uh, what's up. And it always cracks me up that people invariably will answer the wrong way. You know, where you're mm. like, what's up? And they say, Great. good. <laughs> <laughs> and I do it too. I try my hardest not to, but mm. I think that's mine. My typical, my typical yeah. train. Yeah. When somebody asks me how I'm doing, I've, since I spent years putting that mask on and just automatically saying fine, I stop and I look up and I do a little diagnostic and then I either say doing good or uh, survive in advance survive and advance <laughs> um, yeah so my so that does pay in my defense mechanism was for years was let's get the let's get the spotlight off of me and so i became really good at finding out everything about you mm. and so i ask questions about your job your family your interests and then when when they try to come back and say yeah i love uh, rocket science how about you I say, yeah, I I, in, I enjoy uh, underwater basket weaving. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about rocket science. Yeah, and uh, that that was my that was my thing. So I'm really good at small talk and asking you about who you are and how are you doing and everything about you. But it was because I didn't want you knowing anything about me. I was actually I fell victim to this. I oh this I, scheme of yours. Yes, I feel what? like I was like, man, I feel. Like you're opening my eyes. Have I been doing this my whole life? Oh, wow. Mm. Welcome to group therapy yeah. with Nathan, Jay, and Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah, you have. No, I, I definitely have. And I remember specifically, Jay and I were in a an intro to biblical counseling class together. And we were just like getting to know each other, talking. We had like a, I don't remember even the prompt, but we had like just a couple minutes where yeah. we were supposed to like kind of practice the fact finding part of counseling. And you... We were supposed to like flip and halfway through and talk and you just asked me questions about my nerdy board game hobbies. Oh, yeah. And I told you everything you wanted to know about Gloomhaven. Yes. And you listened and acted like you're interested. Oh, no, 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 no. I was interested. You were interested. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, but it, you look pretty genuine right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's the thing, because if, if you just act like you're interested, people are going to see through that. And so it's weird. I am really interested about whatever is is coming out of your mouth. And I can and then I'm just going to dig down on question after mm-hmm. question after question. Yeah, and that's one of those things. Um I had uh, a buddy of mine we hadn't connected for years. And so we had lunch a couple months ago and uh he told me the next time we had lunch that another old friend of ours had talked and he said, "Hey, I say I saw Jay last week." And he said, oh, great, man, how's Jay doing? And he said, I have no idea. <laughs> because the entire time we were there, it was me doing that doing that thing that, you know, I don't have an issue with people knowing me or seeing me anymore, but I've still got that that mm. same uh, that same conversation style of, I'm just going to ask you question after question because it's pretty cool. How about you, Stephanie? I'm just still over here like I do that all the time. Mm. Ooh, re- the redirect? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to talk about my life. I want to hear about you. Yeah. I want to know all the things that are going on in your life. Is this a thing? Am I like, 
You could. It could be a defense mechanism. Hmm. Okay. It was. It was. Let me. Let me be clear. It was a defense mechanism for me. So that doesn't mean it is for you. Okay. That. I mean, that's all I got. Did we just change the direction of this podcast? Wow. A, Are we going to really go into a counseling session? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this all sets up our conversation today pretty well, though, because we're we're doing like a a special one off. Not one off. I mean, I, it's probably going to be for three off. A three off. Yeah, we'll call it that. Yeah. And last week we didn't have a podcast. Yep. Yep. So this week we're launching into uh, a marriage series. And we're going to talk about three specific components of marriage that make a healthy marriage. And that that's going to be friendship, intimacy, and covenant. Yeah. And so rather than doing our typical like exegetical walk through one particular text, we're going to go a little bit more topical for a few episodes and talk about what does the Bible on the whole have to say about friendship. So it's going to be a little bit more scattershot of us going through and saying, hey, here's something that the Bible says about friendship. Here's something that it says and kind of pulling it together. So you've got some more info in your warehouse as yeah. we're going through the, the yeah. sermon. And it, because a lot of times we, we go into a marriage series and we, I at least go on autopilot and think, all right, we're going to hear about submit and lead. Mm-hmm. And, and then that's going to be the realm of it. And so mm-hmm. digging in, in these three weeks and these different aspects uh, where, yeah, those words are going to be mentioned, but they're not going to be the focus of, mm-hmm. of what's going on. Uh, yeah. so I'm excited. Me too. And so something for me that's kind of neat with this is, uh, so I, I started working at Cornerstone six months before I got married. Um, T and I were already engaged and stuff, but we were in the middle of planning our wedding. And so I started working at Cornerstone. And so my entire marriage, like we've been at this church. And so anything I've, like a lot of what I've learned about being married mm-hmm. has come through teachings here. And so I've actually heard Michael teach through this same kind of framework before we did a marriage uh, retreat um, talking about these things. And it was really helpful for me. About how long ago? Oh, um, so I started working here 13 years ago. Um, it was, I mean, it was probably 11 or 12 years ago. Oh, wow. Very early in my marriage. And so like a lot of this stuff, I'm like, Hey, this, this helped me a lot. So I'm excited to see it help all of us a lot. Yeah, definitely. And so week one, we are, we're going to delve into friendship and we are going to take a kind of a sky view of the idea of biblical friendship. Mm-hmm. And Michael's going to dig deeper into connecting that to marriage itself, but we'll be able to talk through a few of those things as well. Mm-hmm. And I think, so as we were talking about how to approach this, one of the things we we're we were discussing is like friendship is a broad topic that the Bible has a lot to say about, like what's it mean to be a good friend. And so we'll talk about it like the broad concepts, and then we'll also take a dive into like, okay, so what's that actually mean within the context of a marriage? Mm. Sounds good. We should probably start with Google's definition, right? A person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual or uh, family relations. Which when I think Stephanie found that one when she, she Googled it and Nathan specifically was like, that's in there. The part about exclusive of the, mm-hmm. the sexual or family relations, because we do, we do have this cultural idea of friendship versus relationship. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, it, it was fun in, in the communicators meeting, we even touched on talking about arranged marriages versus uh, our culture of mm. of not of falling in love before you get married and this idea of falling in love and how you know our someone in an arranged marriage has no mm-hmm. context for what's that what's that mean fall in love no, we're married mm-hmm. um, but i wonder so I, i'm thinking about like we we really like stories even whenever they have to start out that way but then you see the relationship develop over time and they build a friendship it's yeah. like pivot you know, on the roof I've never seen or read or watched Fiddler on the Roof. Mm. Is Tradition. that the story there? Tradition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so so there we are. Yeah. Building into a friendship. Because even even it, unless you were friends and then got together, that most of us weren't friends before we got married. We dated mm. and and totally different things. 
I will say that was, so my, my story was actually, my wife and I met at Shawnee Community College. We were in music theory classes. The first time we were ever like in the same spot together that we know of was um, for, I think it was the Charlotte's Web musical. I was playing in the pit and she was on stage. Not and the pig. I, th- I thought you said the pig. No. <laughs> you are not Wilbur. Some pig. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we, we just got to be good friends, both in the music program there. And so then for us, we're like, man, we really enjoy being around each other. Do you think we should consider <laughs> like dating? So anyway, we were friends first. Very cool. I know that's not everybody's story though. It is not. Yeah, originally I met at a church camp that I had never been to before, but was volunteered to volunteered by yeah. the director to help with the dorm, uh, help mm-hmm. the boys in the dorm. And I knew somebody who was pulling bunk beds out of a out of the top of a dorm, and it was a hundred degrees that day. And I was laughing at him because I was going to the air conditioning mm-hmm. to meet my friend to find out what I had to do. Uh, so I laughed at him for uh, work, lifting this heavy thing in the heat. I walked about ten steps. And I heard this angelic voice from behind say, uh, you could give us some help, you know, and turned around and there she was. Wow. <laughs> That's magical. That's romantic. Our first connection was her yelling at me. <laughs> and by the end of that week, the last day of the week, somehow we were talking as we were leaving and somehow um, I, I carried her bags to her car and it was like one of those, how did this happen? Mm. Kind of moments. Okay. Would you like to yell at me for the rest of our lives? <laughs> yes. And she said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so for us, it, it, it was our friendship has, it really has developed over these last few years. Uh, my parents were divorced when I was young and dad was absent for a lot of that. And so my heart was locked up a, a ton. And that's, mm-hmm. that's why um, my defense mechanism kicked in is because I was hurting so much that uh, I couldn't let anybody in. And she was their closest and she could see that the facade I'd built was fake. And she was trying to pay attention to the man behind the curtain. And, uh, and so once that broke down, now I'm finally able to, to, to engage in a, Mm -hmm. in a relationship that's beyond what I thought it had to be. Mm -hmm. So building a friendship. I think it it helps a little bit to establish like um, just the context of marriage as we're, as we're going into this. So I think one of the, um, one of the most important things is just to say like, where did marriage come from? And so we see in Genesis after, after God's created everything and then he's created Adam, um, he said that everything is good. And then he looks around and says, uh, well, Genesis 2, 8 says, then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Mm. I will make him a helper fit for him. Yeah. I forgot the article that I found yesterday that we all kind of joked about, but it was this, just this, this idea that our first problem wasn't sin. It was solitude. Mm -hmm. And um, boy, that, that really hit me. Yeah. It's the first thing that God said was not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was us being alone. So we can just jump in. We, we're just going to, we're going to read through some, some verses. Uh, there's a chance Michael's not going to touch some of these, but, but yeah, we're going right. to, we're going to hit them and talk about the idea of friendship in general and tie it in. Let's go. Awesome. Stephanie, you want to pick one? You want to read? Okay. She's shaking her head now. <laughs> you guys can't see That's me. good. The audio format is good for head shakes. <laughs> <laughs> so Ecclesiastes 4, because when we think deep friendships, we think Ecclesiastes. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> but yeah, so Ecclesiastes 4, literature. 9 through 12, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone. When he falls and has no other to uh, has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A three-fourth cold, 
Ooh, a threefold Ooh. cord is not quickly broken. So what do you guys see from this one? Like, what are the some of the standout mm-hmm. points in it? And this is like, again, this is friendship in general, and then we can take it and apply it in like marriage specific a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, the first thing you, you see is good reward for their toil. Mm-hmm. That, that we're going to toil, that there's going to be hard work, there's going to be tough times, there's going to be trudging through the, the muck and the mire, but with two, there's good reward for it. There's this expectation that I'm going to need somebody else, mm-hmm. that I will need somebody else. Mm-hmm. They will need me. I think the reciprocity of that, so that you just called out, like that there's going to be a time that I'm going to fall down and I need somebody to help me up. And there's yeah. going to be a time that my buddy's going to fall down and uh, and he's going to need me to help him mm. up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it, friendship's built on me always being the strong one, always rescuing this one. It's not a, not, not a good idea of friendship yeah. mm-hmm. and, and how often, man, how often that view does leak into marriage as well. Yeah. And I for sure like have experienced this, like there, there have been both like in just general friendship and in marriage. So like there have been um, plenty of times where I've been uh, struggling like emotionally and just feeling down um or I've, I've needed, or like the most practical stuff, like a lot of my friends have helped me move multiple mm. times. <laughs> right. Um, and so in both of those, I, I've just been like, man, I, I am so grateful to have these friends around. Mm. Um, and then Tia and I find in our marriage as well, that like the way it generally works and I'm, this is not like a law or whatever, but like the way it generally works is, um, if I'm feeling down and stressed, most of the time she's doing pretty good and she's going Mm. to, uh, she's going to, uh, be able to like help pick me up and stuff. And, and the reverse is true as well. So it's just neat the way God makes friendship work like that. Yeah. And I've no, you know, I've noticed that these last couple of years, as I've gotten more emotionally healthy, being, (laughs) being in that spot of being able to be the strong one, being able to be the one who lends the hand uh, and how, how much that has helped Rachel be, um, be like, feel safe to struggle, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. That's neat. Stephanie, is there anything that stands out in that, in that verse to you? Like that really grabs you about friendship? I'm really quiet today. Um, but the only thing with this, I brought to the table with this text is this was the one that me and my husband used at our marriage, like at our wedding ceremony. And so it was really good to let's see a few years back michael talked about how like this is not talking (laughs) about um the husband the wife and jesus being the threefold cord Mm -hmm. that's talking about like binding together but you got to explain it yesterday that was really good nathan on like describing it on what michael meant i almost said nathan sure yeah and so we were just talking about it's like it's not that it it's not that like the principle is not true for for marriage, um, that, that, you know, but it, it, it's not specifically a marriage passage and the threefold cord, like you said, does not refer to you and your spouse and Jesus. This is like Hebrew poetry. So you've got that progression of two will do this, three will do this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like showing that it's just like really reinforcing the point that, um, that we need each other. Yeah. And that's so true whenever we just think about God in general. Like Mm -hmm. he was within perfect community before Mm -hmm. he created us. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So that was Ecclesiastes 4. Anything pop out? Anything else pop out at you? I don't, not for me. So just walking away from it, I just think like the biggest thing we we get there is that we see, you know, our need for one another Mm -hmm. and it like our lives are better and even more productive whenever we're in friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. That's your favorite. (laughs) That's my favorite verse. Take it on. Um, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is just one of my favorites to like kick people in the butt. Like, 
scripture <laughs> says, like, we need to be in community and we're not to do it alone. Mm. And that to me just really shows it here. And so it's one of my favorites. That's mm. good. A lot of times people tend to think of this as just a get to church mm -hmm. verse, a passage that it's just, all right, don't, don't neglect meet to, meeting together. Don't neglect waking mm -hmm. up on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's much fuller. It's much, much more uh, intricate than just talking about church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I view it as like a, almost as the verge level that we have going here on at Cornerstone. Um, verge is whenever you have two to three friends that you get with each week or each, every other week and you discuss the hard things. And that to me is this. Mm -hmm. yeah, side note, if, if that word verge is something new to you, reach out to us. We'll tell you more. Mm -hmm. I think something that I really like about this and Stephanie, you pointed this out yesterday is um, this, let us consider how to stir up one another. Um, it has a lot of intentionality and mm. thoughtfulness behind it. Yeah. So it's not just like, hey, whenever you're, you're together, you know, it, it's going to happen, you know, that you're going to be encouraged. Although I, you are encouraged just by being together, but there's the let us consider. Mm -hmm. And so I know that like about my friends, I really, really appreciate the fact that they pay attention to how I'm doing. And then they think about the specific words that they can offer me. Mm -hmm. They're going to help me uh, to grow and be more like Jesus. Um and if that's true in our friendships in general, it should definitely be true in our marriage. For me as a husband, I should be thinking about how do I, how am I encouraging my wife in the gospel? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, how am I stirring her up to love and good works? Yeah. I, so thinking about this, so I, I'm guilty of, as being one of those who just, every time I read this verse, thinking, uh, this passage, thinking that's a church verse, everybody get to church. And I, I've taken, man, some huge hits is a weird idea, but man, this hit me harder over the last day since we <laughs> talked about this yesterday. Like, oh my gosh, consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. And I, I had the chance, even this morning. So Rachel dropped me off at the church this morning and on the way she was talking about a struggle she's having. And uh, we were talking through it and I used Nathan, one of the things that has frustrated me so much about your friendship with me as I'm struggling through something and you, you just with those blue eyes piercing at me, <laughs> calmly ask, uh, so what do you know to be true? And I just sat with that for a moment and I got to ask Rachel that this mm -hmm. morning, Rachel, what do you know to be true in this circumstance? And so we talked through that and, uh, man, she, so she drops me off the church and I, we're here in the parking lot and I uh, asked to, if I could pray for her as she starts her day. And it was just a really sweet moment of, of, of me like being emotionally being able to be in this place mm -hmm. where I'm able to see Rachel struggling and consider how I can stir up love and good works in her mm -hmm. by that simple question that you've used on me. That's helped stir me mm -hmm. on to love and good works that what do we know to be true in this situation? Yeah. Whenever I'm having a really hard day and I'm talking to Justin on the phone, we may get off the phone, but then he'll call me right back and he's like, I didn't pray with you. That's so cool. He does really well. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, that's that's very awesome. Yeah. So so let's not neglect meeting together uh, that we don't ghost each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that okay for f almost 45 year olds to say? Parker, is that okay for me to say? No. Parker no. says no. Yeah, no. Hey, Parker, could you come and talk about ghosting? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Can you tell us? Uh, yeah, so we don't drop the ball. We don't cut off communication. We don't stop answering the phone. We don't stop returning yeah. texts. So that'd yeah. be really weird if you did that to your spouse living in yeah. the same house. As well, you, you can, I mean, it's easy. I mean, easy. it could be done. It's easy to emotionally ghost them. Oh. Right. I emotionally ghosted Rachel. I'm just going to keep saying ghosted and watch Parker go crazy. <laughs> the old guy. Uh, but I, I emotionally ghosted her for years yeah. without even. And I love how you're bringing that up because I didn't even think of that, like emotionally doing that to someone. Mm. But we do whenever we allow the enemy to tell us lies in our marriage that makes mm. us think that there's something going on within us that isn't there. Mm -hmm. And so we separate ourselves from our spouse and yeah. like, and we don't intentionally do it. And sometimes we do. Mm. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a part of me that wants to be right more than I want to be united mm. uh, or together sometimes. Which Nathan, you have like 
you've talked about this before with a husband, like whenever you've done counseling with them to tell mm-hmm. them to always own up, even if it's like 2% right. of it. So, yeah. Veto. <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've, so, so even drawing on that, the, the 2% part, mm-hmm. uh, even as, as Rachel historically has been talking to me and she, she would say, and you've never do this or you always do this. That's the, that's the thing I key on, key in on to get out. Mm. And to save myself is like, well, there's that one time yeah, that I <laughs> exactly. I don't always do this. And uh, yeah, that's With my With your hands that big? Oh, that. yeah. I okay. get animated. Okay. All right. First mm. Thessalonians. Do we want to move on to that one? Heck Sweet. yeah. Oh, I'm not going to read it. Oh, okay. therefore. Yeah. Therefore, encourage one another <laughs> and build one another up just as you are doing. Yeah. So to build up is often used in the sense of strengthening, establishing, and causing it to prosper. We see in scripture that rebuilding is used in Psalm 69, 35. God will rebuild the cities of Judah. Jeremiah spoke of God's intention to build up and plant a kingdom in verses 18, 9. So just like here, it's to strengthen, to build up there. Just so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's past the construction phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We picture building each other up as construction, but it it's uh, reinforcing, it, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> getting ready for a, fu- a flood. A flood? El- Elmer's going to go rabbit. <laughs> getting ready for a flood. Rabbit season. And, uh, and so you're getting the sandbags out. So there's a season, <laughs> not mine, of course, but someone's mother-in-law is coming to visit. And so, <laughs> so you've got to, you got to get the sandbags out and ready to go. Is that why you're going to deep fry a turkey? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. She got one this year. She, <laughs> yeah and I, so i think it's like when i'm looking through this this is one of the one another's in scripture and anytime we run across the one another's in the new testament specifically like it's talking about the way believers interact mm-hmm. with, one, uh, with one another <laughs> and but the reason we selected this one because i think there's something like 51 55 of them throughout the new testament yeah. and if you ever want to just a lesson on like how do we behave not only as friends but as brothers and sisters as family in christ then just look up every time that the bible talks about one another mm. um but we picked this one specifically because of the um like the encouragement and building up aspect the way that whenever we're in a friendship we know that that they're real friends because we we sense ourselves becoming more and more like christ through that relationship that it's not just that we have a good time. We do have a good time being together, but we know that we're like being built up and encouraged by it. Um, and obviously the, if that's true of friendship and being believers, brothers and sisters, that should be true in our marriages. We should be mm-hmm. looking for opportunities to encourage our spouse um, and to like build them up, to help them feel uh, like even more empowered to do the things that God's called them to do. And I just think like so many times in our marriages, we're doing the exact opposite of that. Like we're, we're tearing down. Yeah. We want to win. Yeah. Yeah. We're discouraging and tearing down. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Even, and even passively doing that as well, because, Mm -hmm. because really there is, there isn't just a middle ground Mm -hmm. where it, where the building's staying the same. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, we're either being built up or we're being torn down. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, it's an active thing. And one of the things, just as you were talking, one of the things I, I talk about in First Steps when we have it is a quote by Andy Stanley. He says, the primary activity of the early church was one anothering one another. Mm, that's and, cool. uh, man, how, how, oof, boy, I just challenged myself. Uh, how, how much healthier our our relationships, our friendships, our marriages would be if we focused on going through those mm-hmm. those passages like you're talking about and start one anothering one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to do just a quick mention. So this is a short verse, but it stood out to me um, and I thought offered a, a neat per- additional perspective on friendship. So Job 6.14 says, mm-hmm. He who withholds a kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. He who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. And what I what I read in that that just hit me um, was this idea that like <laughs> some of us have a tendency to like if we are in conflict or if we're upset with somebody to be a little passive aggressive mm-hmm. and like withdraw our like a sense of warmth oh, yeah. from the relationship. So it's like, yeah, we'll still be around each other, but I'm intentionally going to 
like give you the cold shoulder some, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, not going to be as warm and inviting in this relationship. And so I just see this, he who withholds kindness, if I, if I withhold that from you as my friend or as my spouse, uh, that's akin to me forsaking the fear of the almighty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's like, man, as friends, we, ne- we should be present and offering that warmth and kindness. Um, and we should be doing the same things for our, for our spouses. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an important part of friendship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, oh man. But it sure is frustrating when you're angry with each, with each other and being kind to one another. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. I was talking with somebody this week about how, you know, after you've had that fight as a married couple, like even after you've worked through it, there's kind of the the residue left of just oh, like, yeah. uh, I'm not sure I necessarily want to sit on the couch with you right now. Oh yeah. And just encouraging, you know, like press, press into mm-hmm. the relationship. Like don't avoid go. <laughs> Sometimes you have to act yourself into feeling a particular way mm. as yeah. much as you want to, you know, feel yourself into acting a way. Yeah. Man. Oh man. Proverbs, Proverbs seventeen seventeen. a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Mm-hmm. This kind of brings up something uh, we found from Tim Keller. Mm-hmm. You found and wrote it into the document that I didn't see. Um, but so he writes about friendship in the Proverbs for four um, qualities that Proverbs shows about friendship, consistency, honesty, vulnerability, and blessing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this idea of consistency is here. A friend loves at all times and a brother's born for adversity. Yeah. That that we, we're not fair weather friends and we can't be fair weather spouses. Mm. Yeah. To be to be clear, Michael is the one who sent me those four. So I did not find them on my own. Very nice. Credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I think, I mean, and I feel like this is this the this is some subject material for like all kinds of like teen dramas or whatever, right? <laughs> you find out who your friends are whenever stuff gets hard. And if they if they leave whenever your life gets difficult, then they weren't really your friends. But it's it's yeah. there because it's it's true. Oh yeah. Do life. you want a list of those? The you friends you, you left to... you or the, the teen dramas? The teen dramas. I know that that's a sweet spot for you. Go ahead. Really... No, I won't. I'm going to spare you. <laughs> I'll, spare, I'll spare you guys. Yeah. I'm, we may have watched several over the snow uh, mm. break from school. But I, I just had, so I just had this idea. I don't know why adversity made me think of it, but I, I remember one time in particular, we were mid argument and I was mid raised volume a statement to my darling wife and realized, oh, crud, she's right. Mm. Uh, mid, like mid me telling her why she's wrong and realizing and then uh, working through and vocalizing that with the, in the same, with the same arm movements at the <laughs> same volume. And now I'm just realizing that you're right and I'm sorry and I love you and you're wonderful. <laughs> and it took her uh, a little while to, to like hear that and not think that I was sarcastic. Um, but even, even in the midst of me realizing I'm wrong, mid yelling at her, there she was at all times accepting that and, and in the same volume and I forgive you. <laughs> It's good times, really. <laughs> I'm sure in this verse, like the the context is more that the adversity is like something that's inflicted from outside. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it still rings true for stuff that happens with uh, from within as yeah. well. So, like, you're uh, one of the things that I remind myself all the time um, is that like conflict isn't always is always an opportunity for growth yeah. mm-hmm. and for a relation to relationship to be strengthened. Mm. And so I think for a lot of us, um, it's like whether it's marriage or or just another friendship, we're like, man, we we've been fighting. Surely that means that there's something wrong with this relationship. And sometimes there, I mean, there is something wrong, but we need to recognize that like any relationship is gonna have conflict in it because you put two humans together that have mm-hmm. their own sin struggles and their own yeah. egos and stuff. Um, but whenever there's real friendship in the middle of it. Um, you can make it through, you can weather adversity Mm -hmm. and know that on the other side of it, like you're stronger. Yeah. So don't run from it. Yeah. Yeah. Lean into it. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. 
put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's hard to live out when you're angry with each other. I'm getting pointed at to talk now. Yeah. Um, just how important this is, like we forgive because God forgave us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really hard to lay aside our hurt and our pain um, to forgive our spouse or a friend. But here it says like we are to put on humility and kindness. Um, so it's important for us to just always remember like he did it for us. And so we should do it for those around us. And we're not holding on to anything by holding bitterness within our hearts. Mm -hmm. Like if we are walking around unforgiving people, regardless if it's a friend or a spouse, like what are you gaining from that? Mm -hmm. And there's nothing mm -hmm. that we gain from like bitterness and anger. Yeah. So. I love that. And it's like this, the very fact that this has to be written in here kind of talks about, you know, partially what I was saying just a second ago. Uh, if there's the command that you need to forgive one another, there's the assumption there that you will damage one another, mm. that yeah. you will do something that offends, you will oh, sin yeah. against one another. It's yeah. part of the human condition. It will happen in your friendship. It will happen in your marriage. And so then this gives you the like, what do you do whenever it does? Mm. Love it. You guys, re you want to talk about next one? We should. Okay. Another Proverbs. Proverbs thirteen twenty. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing about? I didn't see that we put this one in. This is this is phenomenal. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, darling. You said yes, so you're, <laughs> you're in you're in my company. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're not a fool. Oh, thank you're you. That was too long. A pause between my last <laughs> statement and you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed with you, but I think it's been said from the stage many times. And I feel like it was at Bainbridge. It was said, but um, mm. show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Yeah. So fellow new people, the, the place, the church had a building before this was <laughs> old Bainbridge trail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People not 9835. That was the address. Aww. Parker, did you remember that? The address? He was young. You need Bainbridge. Okay, cool. He was young. He was just a baby. He was a wee little baby. Twinkle in his mom and dad's eye. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not true. Today. He was yeah. born before you guys got here. Speaking of twinkles in the eye. <laughs> wait, no. What? <laughs> that's, that's next week. That's next week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stephanie's grossing out over here. Okay. Proverbs. 27.9? Mm -hmm. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Oof. Mm. What are you saying oof about? What is that that hits you? Uh, I So, yep. I have uh, often, over the years, resisted counsel. Mm. Um, Ooh. Yeah, because competitiveness and, and wanting to win and... And if you twist, you know, if you twist Ephesians 5 just right enough, you can get to a place where, you know, mm -hmm. you're, I'm, I don't need to be taking counsel from you. I'm the one who gives counsel. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so and, so uh, so. Um, but that's when you, when you read the totality of scripture, that, that just isn't something that should be happening. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the sweetness of a friend comes from his or her earnest counsel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the like great ways that God gives um gives direction in our lives. So we we go to his word, we talk to him in prayer, um but we also ask for godly counsel from our friends. Yeah. Um and I know that like that's been a majorly important part of my life as well and I've definitely made worse decisions whenever I haven't asked for it oh. and better decisions whenever I have. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, the worst part about being with a spouse who is wise and discerning mm -hmm. and really smart is that they're right a lot mm. of the time. Yeah. Um, which is, it should be the best part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so yeah, we so talking about those things. I mean, seeking that wise counsel from the one who knows you better than anyone else mm-hmm. on in the world. Uh, that that is something that is hard to do, but it's also man, if we can tap into it, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe we should read some words of Jesus right about now. From John 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've always had, had one of those theoretical things. Of, hey, of course I'd jump in front of a bullet for you, mm-hmm. you know? And it's, it's one of those things where you're like, I really hope that that's true. You know, I don't ever want to be faced with that situation, mm-hmm. but I really want it to be true that I would lay down my life for, for one of you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but this idea uh, of making the laying down of your life just a daily thing that we're doing, mm-hmm. just as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, being living sacrifices, that that it's somebody who, yeah, you put your life on the altar in the morning as you start your day. And you keep it there throughout the day as a mm-hmm. living sacrifice, serving and sacrificing for, for those you love. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this is, I mean, this should be a marker of Christian friendship mm. is sacrifice for one another. Yeah. That we would lay our lives down and, uh, and then by extension for our marriages mm. that we should be like husbands should be sacrificing for our wives. Wives should be sacrificing for their husbands. It is the way that that relationship is designed to work yeah. that it's not, you give 50% and I give 50%, but both of us give a hundred percent. Yeah. Man. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so much more than just pushing you out from in front of a bus as it's mm-hmm. speeding by and taking the hit. It's, it is sacrificing my, my urge to be right. And my desire for uh, comfort mm-hmm. and making sure that my friend, my wife, is the one being covered in prayer and, Mm -hmm. and sacrificed for in service. And um, as as we follow Jesus who lived the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So back to Proverbs, Proverbs 27, six, this one. Oh man. Such a strong idea in, in this short verse, faithful are the wounds of a friend profuse or many are the kisses of an enemy. Um, Man. This is one that I feel like I actually really enjoy Mm. Mm because I love whenever my friends call me out on my things because like our whole uh, identity should be to look more like Christ. Mm -hmm. And so here I would rather like a friend to tell me the ways that I could be doing something a little bit different and it may hurt but there's truth and there's love within that. And as long as you're saying it, you know, in a kindly manner, right. And you're not being a jerk about it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So I, I love this verse and Mm -hmm. encourage it very Mm -hmm. much. Yeah. And so the idea is that like an enemy uh, may seem like your friend because, and you may feel great around them because they're flattering you all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm but they're not willing to say the hard stuff. And so like on the surface, you might want to be around people to just make you that say great things about you all the time and make you feel good. Um, but we need friends who will tell us the truth about ourselves yeah. um, because they love us. And so sometimes that also needs to be the case in marriage. Now we should not be looking all the time <laughs> to like, you know, right. just wound our, <laughs> wound our spouse yeah, yeah. with our uh, difficult truth. Um, but Whenever we do it, whenever we do like offer that kind of um, feedback, uh, like we should be like doing it from a place of love and we should be as the recipient, we should be like very willing to receive that kind of feedback. Yeah. And I, but to me in our marriage, like it's way easier for uh, me to hear from my friends, the things that I'm doing harshly Mm. or something that's not as well. I feel like I can handle receiving um, constructive criticism better from a friend than I can my spouse. Mm. Um, Because yeah, just the roles. Mm. Um, Sometimes I feel like it's just harder. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. That's uh, and You're not alone. Definitely. Mm. Definitely not alone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And it makes me think of Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another. Mm-hmm. That it's not a it's not a pleasant process for right. uh, for iron to get sharpened. There right. are shards and there's yep. dust burrs, around. Yeah. yeah. Burrs. Um, burrs. Not bears. I didn't say bears. I said burrs. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cool if there were bears. Still not saying a bear. Yeah. So a say, burr. Yeah. Burr. <laughs> so as as we're sharpening each other with that idea being full of grace that that those wounds are a sweet feel mm-hmm. eventually yeah but i kind of i mean i guess going back i i've historically i'm getting better but historically i've been the same like uh i'll i'll man you won't believe this this listen to this that i read from this book oh my gosh i've been so impacted by this and she says i told you that three weeks ago mm-hmm. how can you hear this from a book and not from me and so over the years, that's hit really hard yeah. because there was there was something, and part of it might be that old that old competition mindset. Um, but there for a long time, I had I had trouble um, hearing that wise counsel from mm-hmm. from Rachel, and who is full of wise counsel. Oh yeah, she's a counselor. It's so awesome. Uh, my first word was frustrating. Um, but yeah, so as I'm, you know, personally, as I'm, I'm growing in that and, and living in grace more, man, it's so good because she is a faithful friend and her wounds are, man, becoming awesome. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I think Stephanie, you might've brought this one to the table and I just, I really like it. So Romans 12, 10, mm-hmm. love one another with brotherly affection outdo one another in showing honor. Yeah. And that's something I remember the first time that really clicked for me because I can be a competitive person. Mm-hmm. Um, and this idea of outdoing one another, I'm like, okay, I'm in. Mm-hmm. And then what are we outdoing one another in? Showing honor. Yeah. It's like, I want to do my, I want to go out of my way um, to do a better job honoring you than you do honoring me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like, man, what would life be like if rather than um, each of us trying to like inflate our own ego yeah. um, and be right mm-hmm. and like have honor shown to us while we put other people down? Like, what would it be like if we sought to honor one another yeah. um, as much as possible yeah. if when, that's where we were competitive? Yeah. Win at, out to, at, at showing honor to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy that's cow. Good. And so then think about that also, like, just take it to marriage. If, if you think of like, Hey, the, the realm in which I'm going to be competitive is I want to show you more, like as much love as I possibly can. I want to show you more honor, um, like than you can even show me. Like if you just have, if that's the way you're competing, that's going to be a healthy marriage. And doing it silently and not saying, Hey, I'm going to spend the next month trying to outdo you in honor and just start doing the doing it. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to brag on my wife for just a second. So she knows that like my, my love language, like one of the top ones for me is words of affirmation and it, she consistently, and I, I don't know, like she's, she's naturally an encouraging person, but I also know that she's intentionally Mm. an encouraging person. And so the number of times where she will just say, Hey, um, like this, this morning, she's like, Hey, uh, thank you you did a great job noticing that I was feeling kind of down last night and just coming and talking with me and putting your arm around me. Mm. And you're really good at that. And it's just like, that just like fills my love tank. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And she just does a really good job with that. And she's just going out of her way, being competitive, outdoing me and showing honor. And it just makes me want to say like, man, what can I do to show my wife that same kind of love? Yeah. Boy, I had to grow in that mm-hmm. because at first... I would hear, hey, thank you so much for loading the dishwasher. Thanks for getting that trash out when it was supposed to. And I heard, and so I'm like, why are you thanking me for something I'm supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. And, and so it was one of those um, things that, that my heart had to soften a lot in that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there is something about mm-hmm. um, outdoing somebody with honor. And and man, now my I do, I kind of the same. I get all mm-hmm. gooey inside. <laughs> when she says she she here's this thing I noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think so. This is just a. 
I, we're, yeah, this is just a, something like, um, a lot of times what ends up happening is we get in just this ridiculous cycle as a married couple where like the wife doesn't feel loved, um, or the husband doesn't feel respected. And so like, mm-hmm. because of that space, we're not likely to extend love or respect to the other yeah. person. And like, it really takes one person to break the crazy cycle there. Um, it takes one person to say, you know what? I'm not going to respond the, with the way I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. I'm going to instead outdo in showing honor. Isn't that Emerson Eldridge's book on Emerson Egridge? Egridge, yep. Eldridge, yep. Egridge, Egridge, same thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great. Love and respect. Yep. Yep. Crazy cycle. We probably have time for like one more. Stephanie, do you want to pick which one we do or do you want Jay to pick it? Oh, mm. I don't know. I liked the next, you know, first Peter four, eight. Let's do it through, I think 10. Cause Sounds like a you great only choice. wanted to do through eight. And I said through 10. <sighs> yeah, Go for it. Okay. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins, showing hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each have received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God, God's varied grace. I loved this one because it says show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Mm -hmm. Like just how we were talking about like doing things for our spouse or for a friend without being like, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like we need to do those things with love Mm -hmm. because that's what we're supposed to be doing for one another. I'm really good at loving people. Like, and I'm not meaning that in a boastful way or a haughty way. Like if you were to ever talk to me, I love people a lot. What's that? Mm -hmm. What's that love for? No, nothing. No. Okay. Go for it. Anyways. So like to just to serve one another, this is something that I enjoy doing Mm -hmm. is helping people. And so just, yeah, this whole aspect of like, it's a gift. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've definitely been, um, I've definitely not done a great job with this at times. So Mm. like (laughs) there, uh, like I will do the thing. I'll take out the trash or right. I will wash the dishes, mm-hmm. but I give a couple extra. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think everybody does that for sure. Like <laughs> slightly slams the cabinet door a little harder than should after I put the gro- dishes yeah. away. Yeah. I just need you to know that I'm doing it, but I'm not super happy about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I have to come back and say, Hey, I'm sorry. I had a really bad attitude about that and I was being selfish. Mm. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome that you apologize for that. Yeah, not so awesome that I'm regularly selfish. <laughs> that went deep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so actually, in that verse, one of the things that I really liked about it um, was the um, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. And whenever I hear that, man, I remember um, Greg Donaldson way back in the day, he helped coach me on like your your options whenever you have um, – something that's been done against you. Mm. And your first option is to overlook an offense. And Proverbs says it's the glory of a man to overlook an offense. Um, second option is that you have to go to that person. If so, if you cannot get over it, if you cannot choose to just like bury it and like genuinely not be offended by it, then you have to Matthew 18, you have to go to that person and Mm -hmm. talk with them about their, uh, the way that they've offended you. Um, and I love that this verse kind of captures that, um, love covers a multitude of sins where it's like, Hey, because I love you, like you may have said that. And I, it might've been slightly offensive to me the way you said it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know your intent and Mm -hmm. I'm, I can choose to let it go. Mm -hmm. Or I know that like, if I find that I just can't stop thinking about it, then I'm going to come to you because I love you. So that this has an opportunity to get covered. So I just think, yeah, in the way that we deal with conflict, within marriage and, and, uh, and just our friendships in general, like having this kind of love allows sins to be dealt with in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Man. Well, all right, guys, thank you much. Uh, Week one of a three week series on marriage. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to the others, but so a, a tendency I think is if someone isn't married, to hear this mm. marriage, yep. Oh, we got three weeks of marriage. Oh, great. Uh, maybe I'm. Maybe I'll. I'll uh, go on vacation on the couch these three weeks. But these 
this in particular, this week, mm-hmm. talking about friendship, it, I, I think that's foundational to us as a whole. And, and so hang with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're going to get through it. Absolutely. So once again, anything uh, just like Tammy a couple weeks ago who wrote in with questions, just like Emmy has before as well. Uh, but she more made fun of my pronunciation than... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You got made fun of on Sunday. Too. I sure did. Wow. Uh, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Hey, I enjoy it. If you want to make fun of pronunciation, mm-hmm. uh, grab us, write us. But uh, He lovingly cried. He just told you how you say it. Yeah. yeah. It was making fun. Yeah. Even if you're making fun. I'm good with it. Uh, <laughs> email us, guys. Uh, thanks so much. We will see you on the flip side. On the flippity flip. Yeah. Say bye, Nathan. Bye. Bye.